No, don't share mine. Why would we share? There's more right there. I do get turned on, but oh. it's just a little different. The focus is going to be more up here. And you're not going to feel much here either. What's up, everybody? Today, I am at Super Training Gym in Sacramento, California, strongest gym in the West. I'm joined by two sexy individuals. Style of Mike right here. Sexy, and we know it. And we got Mark Bell right there. Smelly Mark Bell. And today, we're gonna go over a pretty important exercise, I would say. Squats. 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 How do we spell that? S-K-W-A-A-T-S. He's the brains. There you go, yeah. So I'm the brain. Now that you know how to spell squats, we're gonna teach you how to do squats. If you're a beginner, I think that this is a really difficult lift to learn. Well, not necessarily, you have a lot of questions, right? Um, if you're an intermediate lifter and you're thinking about how do you get to the next level, I think we can answer some questions here today as well. So I'm joined with two pretty damn good experts in squatting. They've done, Mark himself has done over a thousand pounds in competition. 1,080. 1,080 pounds, so. I That's in a squat suit, I will mention that. But I, a little bit of cheating one. Given on. that, given that, I think he knows a thing or two about squatting. So we're gonna go over some of the basics and uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. All right, so first thing we gotta do is figure out how to line up on the bar. These little power rings right here are a good indicator of where you should base your grip off of. If you are, um, if you're a smaller lifter, you might be able to put your hands right on there. If you're a bigger lifter with less mobility, less range of motion, you might have to go slightly outside of there. Find a grip that's comfortable for you and try to stick with it for a period of time, try to learn how that's supposed to feel. Another thing that we need to do is we need to work our way underneath the barbell. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna try to get our back tight. We're gonna try to almost do like a lat pull down type of motion as we get underneath the bar. And the reason for that is we're trying to tighten up the upper back. We're trying to flex the upper back, trying to get all that tight and get it right as he's getting underneath the barbell. When he puts the bar behind his back, he's going to put the bar in a spot that feels best for him. Mike has been training for a couple of years, even before he started powerlifting. He was able to build up some traps, able to build up some rear delts. And so he's able to rest that barbell right in an important spot. It's on a shelf, basically. The reason why that's an important spot is the bar can't really roll up his back, which happens to lifters often as they come up out of the bottom of the lift. So what happens if you're not so well built, uh, you know, in the back, you know, and you yeah. don't have a spot to put that bar? Where are so, we putting the bar? Yeah, it's a great question. So if you're not as well built, you're probably going to have to put the bar either up a little higher or you might have to bring your hands in closer. Somebody who's not really well built, a smaller lifter, a female lifter perhaps, they might have to have their hands all the way in here to be able to try to almost generate like almost a, like a fake tightness in their upper back, almost try to create a shelf off of something they don't really have a lot of back there. When their hands are in tight, it will help create some of the same tightness. We're talking a lot about the upper body and I know you guys are thinking like, oh, the squats, uh, I'm gonna build my quads and you know, my hams, but uh, think about pushing a wet noodle. If all of this is not stiff and we're pushing from the ground with our legs, nothing's gonna move the bar. So right. we gotta find a way to get all this as tight as we can so then eventually our quads get strong enough and then we can transfer that power from our legs into the ground, into the bar. So when Mark's talking about pulling that lats down, you're pulling your lats basically to protect your spine and then we're gonna take as big of a breath as we can to protect the spine all the way around, keep that thing super rigid. Now as Mike sets up on the bar again here, He's going to walk the weight out. Notice he also pulled his chest up as he came through here. So it's important to have what, what I was uh, taught at a very young age when I first started powerlifting. I always heard the term big chest. You don't really hear that term as much anymore. Is that anymore. a compliment? But I think it's a, yeah, it could be. <laughs> big breasts, big chest, big, big, <laughs> big paychecks. I think it's a good way to give you a visual of what you're trying to do. You're trying to make your chest big, trying to make your chest upright when you're doing a squat. The reason all this stuff is so important is we have to try to maintain this position throughout the entire range of motion. As Mike pointed out, the wet noodle effect, you don't want to crumple up during the squat, so you have to get yourself tight. You've got to get everything locked in before you even ever unrack the bar. Now he's going to walk the weight out here. 
going to walk it back. He's going to get his feet set. That's a comfortable stance for him. I would just suggest just going a little bit wider than shoulder width, but find a stance that fits uh, your build and your needs. So as he starts to descend in the squat, he's going to force the knees out. And he's going to simultaneously push his butt back. As he gets out of the bottom of the lift, he's going to keep his stomach tight and he's going to try to push explosively on every single rep. You always want to try to come up. As soon as you have the technique down in some of the form, you always want to try to explode up. The way down, you want some, some control. But on the way up, you always want to try to come up with a little bit of violence. Now, Mark, we're, uh, we're not in a conventional squat rack. Now, where are we? This is a this what? Is specialized. This is a monolift. A monolift. And what is so special about a monolift? Monolift is great because the lifter doesn't have to move anywhere. The, these uh, handles actually just kind of move out of the way. You can see they come forward. And the lifter can just squat right there. They don't have to walk the weight out, so it becomes safer for the lifter. You can adjust the height real easy. <laughs> so if it's Furious Pete's turn and we need to jack it up a little bit, we just jack it up right here. Just jack it off a little bit. My yeah. favorite thing to do. And yeah, so it's got a couple of, you know, guys like us, we can all train together or we can even have a shorter person in the group and it'd be very easy to adjust the height throughout the entire workout. So if you really want to get serious about squats, you got to get one of these. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't push it that far. You don't necessarily need any specialized equipment but it's to be a good lifter, but it helps. It helps. And it always helps with safety. Or just come to Super Training Gym. Yeah, just come to Super Training Gym. Yeah. But, you know, just kind of one quick, quick tip uh, about the squat at the end there. When I was telling him to force his knees out and push his butt back, we want to try to have as much as we can, we want to try to hang on to somewhat of, of a vertical shin angle. Um, the knees have to come forward in the squat. It's the only way you're going to break parallel. But you don't want them to come forward excessively. You don't want them to shoot forward uh, of the toes uh, all that much because that's going to be a limiting factor in your strength. You want to be able to utilize your lower back, your hips, your butt, your hamstrings. You want to be able to utilize all that when you're doing a squat and not just rely on your quads. Sets and reps for the squat are going to be similar we talked about in the deadlift. If you're a very beginner, maybe sets of one through five so you can keep your form perfect. As you get stronger, training in every rep range is going to be good uh, because you're going to kind of walk that fine line of getting stronger with a little bit of deviation in form and also uh, just building muscle and practicing. So I know about, you know, I guess squatting, you know, there's, there's power squats and maybe Olympic squats. Right. So those, I guess, is that, is that when we're talking about foot placement? We're doing power squat here, I'm guessing, more, more of a power squat. Yeah, you squat. know, uh, so Olympic lifters a lot of times will squat with the bar higher on their back and they'll get really, really low in their squat. They'll get all the way down almost to the point where their ass is touching the ground. In a powerlifting type of squat, we have a little bit wider stance and the, uh, the bar is a little bit lower on our back. And we're trying to usually get down as low as we can, um, but some of us have limited uh, mobility. And then also with a wider stance, it's usually just a little bit harder to get as low anyway, because your hips really get wound up. Uh, powerlifters years ago, before there was like squat suits and all these different things to rely on, lifters used to go with a really wide stance and point their feet totally straight ahead. It almost made like an internal suit for your body because you can only go so low. You need several hundred pounds to even break parallel with a wide stance with your feet pointed straight ahead. Right. But both are great for building strength. Powerlifters uh, can take advantage of a narrow stance with a higher bar position. Uh, and I personally think that weightlifters, crossfitters, everyone else could take advantage of maybe a lower bar position, a little bit wider stance, because it does slightly work uh, more, more posterior when you got a, a wider stance uh, opposed to just quad. So you guys definitely maybe recommend uh, for, you know, especially if you're a beginner, to try and bolt, do, do both and, uh, you know, see what you're more comfortable with too. And yeah. Yeah, build it up. Yeah, right. use both and then also uh, always try to have control of the weight. I might do just a couple reps here, maybe even three or four reps. You always want to control the weight up. I suggest that you try to explode up, um, but that still, still stay within the range of keeping good form and making sure you're not going to blow anything out. <laughs> that you always want to practice good form and you always want to try to have uh, some good control of the weight. The more control that you can show, with the weight, the stronger you're going to become faster. should also point out that just because you're controlling the weight 
doesn't mean you can't be, still be aggressive with the weights. As you become more advanced, you can start to move into trying to drop a little faster and some stuff like that. But in the beginning, first year or so of squatting, just move the weights the way Mike is right there. All right, take us home, Furious Pete. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I think we learned a little thing, a thing or two about squats. We're going to do a couple of squats just to showcase, you know, what we can do. Uh, I don't think we're going to go super, super heavy, but we're going to do a few reps just to, I guess, show, practice Move. what we preach. Build the glutes! Yeah. Practice what we preach. Move some weight around, and then we're going to get out of here and go eat. <laughs> <laughs> food is a good thing. Food is a good thing, my friends. It, I mean, ultimately, without the food, we don't we're get the games. We don't get them games! <laughs> Synergy! Right, some squats. You only gotta walk it out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I've never had that privilege yeah. before. Yeah, just get your feet underneath you and then to unrack it, kind of push your hips forward. Get your normal stance, big breath, and then just stand up. Squat right there, buddy. This feels weird. I feel yeah. like I need to go back. Take your feet. There you go. There. Kind of see how he has that aggressive start from the top. Okay, it's a great way to squat. That feels cool. Yeah, well, it was pretty go. good for a tall guy too. Yeah. yeah. He was starting to squat aggressively, um, but he wasn't haphazard. He wasn't losing his form or his technique. Technique looked pretty good. Uh, a lot of taller lifters, I think it's important that they start to lift aggressively. Just because you're starting fast or you're moving kind of fast, still doesn't mean you're out of control. You're still in good control, and the pace is really good. Good job for you, Pete. Thank you. <laughs> Add a little weight. A quick tutorial for you guys on squats. Special thanks to these two gentlemen right here. I'll leave a link to their channels in the description below if you guys want to check them out. And I suggest that you do. Let me know what you guys want to see next. Let me know the best thing that you saw on this video in the comments below. Stay sexy. Stay sexy. Stay hungry. And of course, get laid. Here we go. See you guys next time. Oh my God. <laughs>